Hey guys, what is up? Today I will be describing the entire history of the 801st and 42nd server. It all began on July 28th, 2020. New beginnings day. I was streaming HVV, what I'm doing right now, with my friend. And what he was, and what we were doing was playing HVV. Nothing special, but he was streaming. This guy named Alpha underscore Leader 42 comes onto the stream. And do you know what he does? He asked us to join his Battlefront 2 group. And that was called the 42nd Mobile Reconnaissance. Now, it really doesn't have anything to do with the 801st, but it has everything to do with the 801st. New Beginnings Day started my journey into the Battlefront 2 world. Without him coming on my stream, there would be no 801st. There would be no free Battlefront 2 group. A lot of things would be different in the Battlefront 2 scene for PlayStation today. If Alpha underscore 42 did not get on my, sh my friend's stream that one day. It was nice at the beginning. It was... We mostly played Age of Republic Supremacy, what we do mostly. We also played a lot of HUV because the clan was really small. At ba back then it had like 30 people. And it was just basically the same people playing over and over again. So there was really anything... Nothing special. But it, 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 was, it was good. And so on August 7th we were playing this HVV match and I was like why don't I message someone and that is when I recruited Calamity Eclipse the f my first recruit on August 7th 2020 this began the first era of recruitment because I was like what if I made the 42nd big and uh, then it was big so the first era of recruitment just mostly the beginning of it was kind of like a high point one of the high points of the 42nd. This was when Alpha underscore Leader became a Discord mod. And it went downhill from there. But this this was before all that. This is when we played for fun. The hero rotation thing. The only role we had was a hero rotation where we would play Age of, Age of Republic Supremacy and we would rotate the hero so people could actually play hero and not have and not have people hogging it. So it was actually a pretty good rule. It you'll just see in a second how that got affected later on. So we were playing, everything was fine until Alpha started to become more pushy. As I was expanding the server, things started to go downhill because he was getting to the point where he started doing stuff that made kinda no sense. He kicked another commander named the real Gomo for, I guess, I, uh, he like insulted him or something. I don't know the full story to that. And there was also uh, the Galaxy Sky incident. This guy named Galaxy Sky played with us. He was pretty active too. He was like a lieutenant or something. And what happened was he decided to go into Age of, well not Age, oh, what was it? Age of Rebellion Supremacy by himself because he said this was an inside joke though I'm gonna try to do the voice too does anyone want to play Death Star 2 Supremacy and he asked a few times and no one responded to him and then he left and played Death Star 2 Supremacy by himself during the first era of recruitment you got some pretty notable names so let's I'll, I'll name them all out so but it's more for perspective now, I'll name the people who I didn't recruit as well, because it would make a lot more sense. So, let's go back to the beginning. So, Alpha recruited me. He had another senior commando with him called Operatic. Operatic recruited Isaiah and Fresh Biscuits around the same time Alpha recruited me. I started recruiting, I got Calamity Eclipse. He was the most notable one at the beginning. There were a few others, the Notorious Newt. Tim the Enchanter that played us with us back then. Now, now they're all inactive, so now they haven't played with us in years. Sizzle My Nizzle was another one. They were my first recruits, my first batch. Anyway, when me, Operatic, and An Anarchy were on a party chat one time, it was like late night in the raid. He was being, he started to like implement some new rules. This is when he recently kicked Gomo. That's, this is the continuation of that story. This is the first talks 
of the 801st Tricorps being created. The original people were me, Operatic, and Anarchy. So I created the server and I just said to Alpha, hey, I'm just creating a group. It's just a backup server. It doesn't really mean anything. Which, at that point, it really didn't mean anything. So at that point in time, there wasn't really much going on. Except for, like, possibly mutiny. But he fixed himself really well he fixed his the problems he was became more active after that it was fine then then other than this is where we start getting into other notable names these are the likes of dell reaper they're the main two who are still in the 801st g marie was another 42nd main player tv sportsman was also around this time oh and another guy but he's not no, no longer active spot and rain was also recruited during the first era of recruitment but then after a while it got to the point well the first era of recruitment ends because that's what happens and then began the second era of recruitment this is where we went from like 50 some people to 100 i went ham with recruitment this is when we started getting 20 people at raids every single raid it was so active this is when other notable names started to appear, such as my special guest for this video, A Peng. A. Yes, he was recruited in December, and it was from November 1st to December 31st. And if I didn't say it, the first era recruitment was from August 7th to October 31st. But during the first e or second era of recruitment, there were some individuals who got recruited during this era. However, they were not active during this era. They were, got recruited in like November, but weren't active until the third era. Their names, Jakey Sucker and Sir Clanker 14. They are the best people I've ever known. They definitely didn't cause problems. Now back then they weren't active. They joined one raid, then never joined until January. But that's in the third era recruitment. I'm getting into that, the creation of Red Gang and all of that because that's technically part of the history too because it was made during a 42nd raid so during this time i also recruited another man named nubby man 12 who becomes a key player down the line that's basically it for the second era of recruitment it's just alpha started to become more mean and a bit more strict but I, it was like you, you couldn't like it wasn't that bad though it was raids were fun activity was so high it, it was fun however when we get to the third era of recruitment, January 1st to February 11th, this is when things took. Not, not the huge turn down of the 42nd, but this is when things started to turn negatively for us. During this, well, first, let's, I'm going to talk about the pros first. Well, pros-ish. The one night in January, we were playing Starfighter Assault. It was me. Oh, how could I forget about Knight Rider? Knight Rider was also a key player, and he was there before me. He was like one I of the first people about recruited him too. In, for in the 42nd. The Knight Rider. It was me, him, because he started, he was like in, he like joined like the raid I w first was in, and a few others after that, and then he like never, then he went inactive. But the, he was back, activity was at an all-time high it was the end of the raid there were five of us left me knight rider nubby man 12 jicky soccer and sir clanker 14. us four created red gang which was a gta type clan now this was before they were bad they got bad in the next two years this is when it was fun playing with them because they didn't say the funny word every second how could i forget there was another player in the second era of recruitment too, named Gus, who became a pivotal player down the line. Gus was originally part of another Milson named the, like the 212th Attack Battalion, something like that. But they were inactive. The problem with Milsons back then was you can start a Milson, get get them pretty active really quickly. However, you needed active leaders who recruited actively. This Milson did not. They relied on the Battlefront 2 Discord, which did get a lot of members back then, but they weren't active because they were already part of like 10 other Milsons. 
I said, why don't you just join us? Because we were partnered at the time. And he said, sure. So I kind of took him from them because he was decently high ranked in that server. And me and Gus have been, like me and Peng also have been really close these past few years. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, no, back then it was me, Gus, Knight, against the world. Those were my... Oh, and another guy named Leviathan who was in like the second ever recruitment too. I, I, there's just so many people who got recruited I can't remember to name all of them. Because there, there were just so many people that came and went though too. In like G in early January I think it was. It was from time in November to January. There was a server, that 212 server. They were Milsim and I was really, really anti-Milsim. I was like, why? Because I... This, my reasoning of joining 42nd was because it was free that I owned. That was my only condition. Like I wanted to join one, but I didn't know where to find a free one because I don't want to have to follow orders and have to only wear or only play certain classes. That, that just wasn't fun to me. And this 212 server was a typical Milsim. Oh, follow orders. Oh, you can't do this. You can't do that. You can only play these classes. You must follow orders. If you don't follow orders, you will be subject to demotion and possibly kicked from the server. Like, it's just dumb. And this is when the James Black Revolution was created. It was me, Knight. The original members were me, Knight, Leviathan, Jeremy, which didn't have Battlefront. He was just a separate player. So, the James Black Revolution... I believe. I think this was the case. Alpha was about to kick me from the server. And everybody said no, don't. Almost literally everybody said, except like the other high commanders who were like on Alpha's side for almost everything. Basically most of the server said, don't kick him. And people were gonna say, I'm gonna leave if you kick him. Like there's no point. And so basically out of peer pressure he did not kick me based off of a misunderstanding about the ra raid I guess on the 212 server this is when I start to familiarize myself with other clans because at this point we were getting big there were some bigger milsims that said ho 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 your activity we want it we want your num we want your members part of us that's why we can be active together yeah mm-hmm you just don't want the numbers for yourself and have us be your scrappers that we would have to climb up for. And that server was known as Drumwall. C-O-T-R. Back then, back then, the leader who was in the main contact with us was Trauma. There were some pretty, pretty weird allegations against him. So he got banned from C-O-T. I'm not sure if they're true, so I'm not going to mention what they were. But he got banned from COTR. I think I got an, I think I got an idea of what these allegations are. You, yeah. If you know what if you know what I've been talking about the past two years about them and what <laughs> Yeah. So Trauma wanted us to merge into them saying, Oh, you keep the same ranks, which we would have. But we would also lose sovereignty because then we would have to follow all their regulations. We would have to follow their rules, which were Obey orders. Hero, you can't play hero. Like, no, that, like, the whole foundation just changed. What the consensus was. I was originally part of the original talks of it, but then. Actually, no, Alpha tried hiding it from me at first, but Biscuits told me about it. And I was like, what? I was like, no, 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 you're not gonna do this. I not spend hours recruiting people just for you to hand us over. To, to them and have us obey their orders that would make no sense so what I did after that was though let me think so we were in talks of the merging I was like this is a bad idea I was like oh let's heal them out we didn't obviously go through with it in the end he said it was his decision that he made without any without my influence I doubt that because <laughs> I said I would have I would not join them if we merged and I would create my own 
I guess, so I had a I had strings on him, which were eventually broken. But for the most part, he really couldn't kick me at that point. At that point, because if he did, he would lose more than half his server. He would lose. He would even lost more back then because he didn't have the relationship with some people. He did. And they, because there were a lot of new people who had a relationship with me and not with the other commanders who were mostly for his side. With Biscuits, with Knight being on my side for the most part, and Biscuits being in the middle, most of the commanders were on his side. Which the, they would show people too. Cat, Isaiah, they would show people. It's just they took his side with a lot of stuff. Even he, as like a person, is like chill. He just doesn't know how to run a Battlefront 2 group effectively. And that is why they are dead. And we are alive. It's our history, not their history. Or my history, mostly. Facts, yo. So, other thing. So that happened, the merge, or almost merge happened during that time. I said no. Other than he ultimately said no because it wouldn't it wouldn't really work out. It was pointless. We would have had to follow all the rules. It would have been just a mess to migrate everyone in there. And then we would have had to follow their leader, which all oh, that leader is ugh, the admin. Oh the admin mm. If you want to sort of Discord mod admin you go you go there. Especially back then. Like now I'm pretty sure it's a lot better. Back then those admins and mods, oh they were they were nasty. Let me just say. I think most of them are either inactive or left. So now I think they're better. But enough about them. It's our history. Our story. So merge fell through. That didn't happen. And this is when I realized I need to start doing something. We need to prove that we can be just as good as these people. And back then, the 42nd was, I think, objectively better skill level than the 801st ever was. There was only one time period in the 801st that we may have been better. May have been. Problem was, we had max hero galore in the 42nd, while we only had a few in the 801st, because most of them were the commanders. Who had many max heroes and max classes. So then, I don't remember. I looked in the server, trying to figure out what it was. Or oh, I tried looking what the official name was, but then began the next, the next one, the next phase. The Blitz Raid Mania. Now this was not its title. I, it's like, oh, I think they were just called Blitz Raids or something, or Raid Mania. So that's why I just combined it into one, one long term. This is when, from February 12th to March 6th, ob again, these are objective dates. I just, I'm, it was around this time frame. Or oh, subjective dates. This is when I played Battlefront 2 every single day. Led raids three times a day. For like three to four weeks. I think it was three weeks. This was during the COVID times. So I had nothing else better to do. Now during this. I needed access to. back. We used a raid point system. Which I've changed to make it easier on everyone. And it's cooler. Now. But back then we used the Google Sheet for raid points. Which you got points for joining the raid. And then that's how we determined promotions. With like, after you got like a certain amount of raid points, you would get promoted. <laughs> Since I was giving people a bit, a bit too many extra, which I, which I was, but I mean they were active, so I was like, why not boost their, boost their points up. Most notably, was G Marie and a Peng. I boosted because they were active. So yeah, like, I like attended every raid. Yeah, so I was like, may as well promote them or like give them more points because they're really active instead of having them do this long thing. Which now I do do the long thing for the most part because now we were at the point back then we were like so small and compact that we needed ranks of all types. Now we don't need as many, so the 
room for me finessing it is a lot smaller. So I played a lot. Other than, but since I was giving people extra eight points, he took away the perm for me to edit the sheet. So, and he wasn't editing it at all. So now people weren't getting raid points at all. That made some people angry. I was like, people want the raid points. I can do this. I promise I won't give anyone extra raid points. No, you can't be trusted. Okay then. So this, uh, then art like well, between me openly against the merge and saying this is really dumb, disagreeing with him a lot, but, and the revolution thing against the 212, and now this, this was the end of the 42nd, and I knew it was coming. And I was, and I could speculate, and I did have some talks with some people during this time period. Mainly G Marie Spartan and Reaper. I created a group chat saying we need to fix the server. He's he's going too far. It was also during this time period. A Peng can tell your story now about how he demoted you for stupidity. <clears throat> so basically, we have this whole system where someone has to tell you you're allowed to be a hero. And um, I heard someone tell me that I was allowed to be a hero, and I confirmed it, like, two times. But then, come to find out later, I wasn't able to. So then Alpha tells me that I'm getting a demotion without even really a warning. Yeah. And what was also funny about that, I like, just remembered, was that Alpha was in a separate party chat at that time. That was that was another thing that started to happen. They started the command. There's not me, but other commanders were starting to create other party chats because they it was too loud for them, and they wanted which I sometimes though Jakey Soccer sometimes this is when he was active. This is when him and Clanker started to be active a lot more again, and yeah, I I especially Jakey Clanker, it was annoying back then. But I, I could see I could see their point. I understood their point. It just there were other people who could you could have added, but you didn't. And that's when I was like, okay, the, if you keep like separating people in the Edo first, it's, it's gonna create subgroups. And that's what I and I Edo forty second. And that's what I'm trying not to do in the Edo first. Like obviously we have strike and eagle regiment, but that's different. That's just so we split up into those two if we overflow, which we're not going to do for a while. So, yeah, he was starting to go low sickle mode with his things that he wanted to do. I didn't agree with a lot of it. I knew my days were numbered. He knew my days were numbered because at that point since he was starting to create these party chats and only allowing certain people in this allowed for subgroups to be created and some people who may have left with me originally did not end up leaving because they did not know anyone who left because of the subgroup they've created most notable example is G Marie she told me she did not want to leave because she did not know anyone who's joining which is fair I could see that I could see that But other people recruited, well, I forgot to mention them before, but there was Flooper, Sketch, these were people who stayed in the 42nd, that's why I didn't mention them at first. There was Flooper, Sketch, uh, Dragon Eye, these people were like the best people I've ever recruited. I forgot I recruited, about Dragon Eye. I recruited Flooper, I recruited Dragon Eye, I recruited Sketch. These people were really good at the game. And along with the other commanders we've recruited and other people I recruited before, we were an unstoppable force. And it was a shame because we could, if if I just, but I was also immature back then too because I, I just wanted to be the leader. I mean, again, Alpha brought it upon himself, but I wish I would have 
communicated more instead of trying to form a secret organization every five minutes because if we would have stayed and worked things out we may have I would have definitely gotten control of the server eventually because he gave it to biscuits and I was definitely more active than her we would have created the most active Battlefront 2 Milsim to this date because we would have had the activity of them and on top of that all the new people I recruited after that but all good things must come to an end and that from March 7th to March 17th these were the last days of the 42nd of 2021 this is when I created the group chat Jimmy Reaper and Spartan saying we need to we need to fix this so I made something called the 42nd Accords which I actually still have on here I have to find it. Here it is. Right. <laughs> Funny. The Crimes of Alpha Underscore Leader and the 42nd, written by Marshall Commander Cully. Article 1 brings forth the many crimes of Alpha Leader and why the 42nd quarters were created in the first place. Oh, this is the summary of Article 1. We were created in the first place. It stems from long ago with Gomo until the present. Now, this is when Operatic and I were talking more. Because I didn't really know why Gomo left. I was told because he insulted Alpha. But there were some other things. And these are some stories that I'll share. The big one and the one that tipped the scales. This is one of the last raids that we were in. This I think was the third last Saturday raid. And the big one and the one that tipped the scales. Alpha lied to everyone about why A-Ping didn't get demoted after he accidentally stole a hero. Due to a miscommunication. Which is the one Peng told us before. He said that Nakano, or Jean Marie, wanted him demoted, but she never did. That's the thing. He said she was so mad that she didn't get the hero that she thought he, you deserved to be demoted. That's the stupidest excuse I've ever heard. She never said that. She told me she never said that. That's what they agreed upon, so it wouldn't seem like Alpha was being the one going out of control. Number two. According to inside sources, the Marshal Commander has been trying to find ways to demote Regimental Commander Kali. I was a Regimental Commander in the 42nd for the most part, except when I was senior, but then I was demoted because of whatever other thing I did. For fighting for the people instead of submitting to his law. Such powerful speech I had. So, someone told me that he was plotting against me basically so that that was another reason a qu clause three according to inside sources the marshal commander alongside other commanders went behind regimental Co commander Kali's back to do a huge decision with server such as emerge and form the plan to remove me so i didn't interfere so this was basically an add-on to the cotr emerge story i forgot about this they wanted to kick me before they merged if they decided to merge if they since we since they didn't decide to merge, they didn't kick me. But if we merged, they would have kicked me beforehand, so I couldn't message the people saying I was creating one. Yeah, there were some bad things going on back then. Ah, right. Peng was a lieutenant, and he got the man demoted to a second lieutenant. I earned that role. Oh yeah, I like this one. When Second Lieutenant Peng put in the chat, this is a petition to make Regimental Commander Kali a senior commander. Because I was a senior commander. Mm -hmm. But then they demoted me. I forget what they demoted me for. It was... I think it may have been the 212 thing. Instead of being kicked, they just demoted me. Understandable, I guess. It was a misunderstanding, but... If they had to do something, I guess that's fine. So when he when he said he like wanted to create a petition, Isaiah's words were, and this was the exact quote, because I looked back. You still have time to take that down. I was like, Oh, I remember that. <laughs> what? What dictatorship is this? People can't express their opinion. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, then I just went on a little tangent about that. Clause 5. Proclaim the server as a complete oligarchy. <laughs> oh yeah, then I use technical. Google says what is what it is the best. Oligarchy. Government by the few, especially despotic power exercised by a small and privileged group for corrupt or selfish purposes. He doesn't care about the well-being of the troopers, and he does what he wants. To be fair, it is the server. But who would want to be a server like that? So, he has the right to do what he wants with the server, however, that he was going against what he originally created it for. And no one, at the beginning, a lot of people had a say and stuff, then no one did. And it was basically just him, any, like, and the other top, like, other senior commanders. Oh yeah, then this is, he ban- uh, so... That's the first five. Oh, yeah. So that was the first five clauses. The, uh, the next five happened after I was banned. So what happened on March 18th, 2021 was, uh, it was funny too, because I was at football practice at the time, and Biscuits messaged me saying, you're going to get banned at 5 p.m. EST. And I was like, really? Now, out of all the times, you had to do it right now. Oh, what? So this began the next five clauses in the series of events. Clause six. Banned Kali for wanting reform in the server. Server. Now, granted, the way I was doing it, it made sense. Because at that point, I knew he started to catch on that I was messaging people about the first five clauses. So I had to go s a speedy mode. And I had to message people as quickly as possible. So I didn't even give them the clauses, which was wrong of me. I just said, I want to reform the server. Do you agree? And if he doesn't agree to the reforms, I'm gonna leave and create my own. Would you join? And the put and people said yes, but I didn't give them what the info was, which they would have agreed anyway. Because most of them did end up joining. There were only a few that signed that didn't end up joining, which were Flooper, Drew, mm, Flooper, G Marie, and TV Sportsman. Alright, now, that that was me leaving. Oh, uh, then, I forgot. Oh, wait, no. Right. I'm not even done yet. That's, I forgot the other story I wanted to tell earlier about night is coming up. It's the next one. Clause 7, though. Operatic called Cat Childish about the whole situation. Because it, it, it's Battlefront. I don't know why we took it this seriously. And he got banned for doing that. Now, he was also part of the 801st too, because me and him were the original ones who talked about the creation of the 801st, so he was always in it. But it was just dumb that he got banned for calling a commander childish about the situation, which he was speaking facts. Now, this is the funny night story. Clause 8. Blacklisted the 801st Strike Corps on the most corrupt... I don't even care. Like, back then I cared. A bit. Now I don't... I just laugh when I hear this story because it's the stupidest discord mod thing ever There was this thing called like the galactic senate, which was made up of like bf2 clans It wasn't like the united milsims the united milsims came later and i'll talk about that too, but that was a lot a lot 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 better Cut here hold on I have an idea this is this video is going to be mad long, even if I edit it. So what I'm going to do is I'm yeah. just going to split it up into parts. We're going to record everything now, but I'm just going to mm -hmm. split it up into parts so it's easier. Okay. I'll do like the 42nd, 801st part 1, and then 801st part 2. How have I been doing? Good. I mean, you haven't been talking that much. Cause you, yeah, I know, but I'm really trying not to. I'm trying to let you tell the story. Especially since I don't know much about this part of it because I wasn't in that circle.
Yeah. You went in the chats. Yeah. Right, like when we, when we get into the 801st talk. Oh, yeah. yeah. I have nine really... minutes before I have to save it. So, it was, they blacklisted me, and let's let's read this. Clause 8, blacklisted the 801st strike on Kali for poaching, member, for poaching members. This is the funny thing about clans back then. Poaching members is the stupidest thing and anyone has ever done. Now, I don't mean the action of doing it. I mean creating it. It means going into other servers and asking them if they want to leave their server to join yours. If anyone says yes to that, random person coming into a server and they want to leave, let them. They're not loyal to you. Let them leave. They don't care about the server if they want to leave it. It's their choice to leave. So that, and a lot of servers were blacklisted for poaching back then when it was the stupidest thing. Back then poaching was like, it was like the Red Scare. It was like instead of calling someone communist, they called him a poacher for the stupidest things. Let's continue reading. Not only was those two things blacklisted, now this is where Knight comes in, but Knight was also blacklisted because he decided to join. He didn't even poach anyone. He just left the server, and his explanation was peaceful. He just said he doesn't really play with them anymore, and mostly plays with Red Gang. So that's why he left, because Red Gang, another thing that caused this that I didn't put in here, because it was kind of justified, was Jakey and Klenka got banned for calling Biscuits uh, a, funny, uh, w a bad word, which... W but oh, it wasn't Clanka got banned. This is the thing: Clanka doesn't curse except for the except for the one funny word. He doesn't curse except for the worst word. Yeah, but he but he doesn't. But that's the thing, though. Other people used these terms too, and they didn't get banned. So like that that was uncalled for. And he like he doesn't curse except well even back then he didn't curse at all even using that word. He'd even say that back then. It was pretty recent when he started using it he left like he left the most peaceful way possible he just said he plays with red gang more he doesn't play with the 42nd like nearly as much so he said he's gonna join the server who he plays with the most understandable yet they blacklisted him for poaching how like that doesn't even make any sense he wasn't even the one who posted who poached clause nine Oh yeah, there was a funny message he sent out to uh, Alpha after I was banned. Told lies to the people of the 42nd of what stuff that happened in the past, the stories happened. But from his meager point of view, is what is what the stories I just told before. Stories happened from his meager point of view. The first one was debated on the 212. Blah, blah, blah. All the... Me just saying how he was wrong and he was yeah clause 10 alpha think <laughs> alpha thinks he's everyone's dictator and decides what they can do and cannot do outside the server now the first part inside the server i agree with the outside of the server if someone does something outside of the server and it's not really 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 severe it you shouldn't like punish them for it because it's like it didn't happen in your server so why do you care? Especially with proof nowadays, people like to fix stuff. So yeah, that was the history of the 42nd basically. About how it was created, all the funny things that happened doing it. And how it eventually fell, which it was active for a year. I will grant them that. They didn't recruit much. They recruited, I think, maybe five people that, like, was stayed after we left. But now they're dead. Which makes sense. The game's dead. Most clans are dead. Like, I, I'll we're put that dead. Them. We're, we're dead to an extent, but we're at least, at least we do raids. They don't even do... No one does raids anymore. And they... That's a whole other thing. 
but that was the history of the this is part one of a three-part series this was the history of the 42nd